right, uh, hello everyone. Uh, it's, it's super exciting to be here. This is my first talk in English. My first ever talk was in Italian, which is not my native language, it's Spanish. So as you can see, that was, as Punker mentions, as a space to thrive in many languages as well. So yeah, super excited uh, to be here and, and sharing uh, my perspective on, on that also. Uh, a little bit about me, I do marketing, communications, and branding, and uh, web two jobs, I used to do them, apply to science and the music industry, and through the pandemic, searching, um, doing research on how to do a music festival uh, online, I just started learning about NFTs and Discord and, oh my god, what a rabbit hole, and that took me to learn more about decentralized work. I joined the Bankless DAO in 2021, and I contributed, still contribute there as um, in different areas because you know that work is very fluid, which is also another amazing thing. And uh, to, I've been doing uh, talent coordination, I've worked like more than 50 people to DAO, uh, also a marketing coordinator, and now I'm part of the grants committee. Um, now my official role is a project, which is a DAO native project, which is about Backless Academy. And I'll, I'll share a little bit more about that too at the end of the Okay, so um, three aspects. First, we're going to tackle what is a DAO, the definition itself. Uh, what are the main differences with traditional organizations? And also, how DAOs are spaces for personal growth. So I'm not going to tackle much about the technical aspects of a DAO. Probably you already know much about that, and if you don't, uh, well, you'll, you'll get to that point. But um, I want you to think about this talk as uh, DAOs that are not only about technology, but they also provide a unique space for personal growth, for exploration and development. <laughs> Thank you. It was good, but yeah. <laughs> okay, so the definition, uh, what is a DAO? DAOs are community-driven organizations with a common purpose, this is most, the most important part for me, uh, that operate without centralized control. And they use blockchain technology to transform agreements into code ensuring trust and transparency among their members. So this is uh, the most basic definition I could find about DAOs, and we're going to tackle each topic uh, as we go. So yeah, we said common purpose, right? So when humans build upon something that really interests them, that really kind of naturally motivates you more to contribute and to provide value. So you can see there's space for everyone in DAOs. So you can join a DAO that's focused on finance, investments, education, health, um, science, you see a lot of D-side things lately, um, legal, content, and media, which was my entry point, um, social skill sets, hobbies, and fun, such as like pizza DAO. So there's like for all, for everyone. Okay, so the major difference is why should I like explore DAOs or start contributing in one, What's, what are the main differences from traditional organizations? So the first ones, uh, these are different aspects. You can see on the left, and you can compare from traditional orgs and DAOs. So um, hierarchy versus decentralization. In traditional organizations, you have top-down management, there's a boss, and there's rules, and everyone follows them, so there's not much space left to explore. And in DAOs, there is no central authority or control which does not mean that there's not uh, an organization. I mean, there is some type of order, but the community learns how to coordinate and organize between themselves. Um, regarding ownership and equity, um, the majority of the times people don't have shares of the company, and even if they do, they might not be linked to the decision-making process itself. In DAOs, ownership and influence uh, are based on um, token holdings, and some other DAOs are starting to um, also um, use reputation or the time that you have been in the DAO contributing as part of the, of the influence that you can have on voting. And transparency, uh, tra regarding transparency and accountability, traditional organizations, I'd say no transparency. We do not know what happens with the behind closed doors. Decisions are taken and that's it. Uh, but with the difference in DAO that the information is publicly accessible through forums, that we have active discussions. And then the voting happens using blockchain tools, so it's always available and transparent. Other differences um, for regarding governance and decision making um, in traditional organizations, employees 
just follow instructions. So yeah, not much to do there. Uh, but in DAOs, people learn how to you know, build proposals and vote on them and be informed as they go. It's also um, in traditional organizations, inclusivity is not even a thing. It's very, very difficult for people to be included. Uh, it also depends like where you live or what you studied or your background or whether in DAOs, this is so different. Anyone can participate. I've uh, had the honor to work with a lot of people in the DAO space that only have a mobile and an exec connection. Like, there's a, lot, a high percentage of the world that does not have access to a uh, desktop. So imagine that. Regarding uh, risk and rewards, uh, employees receive uh, salaries and bonuses in traditional organizations, but it generally is not tied to the performance of the company. So if the company, if thanks to the work of all the contributors, does very well and it has a high profit, this generally does not transfer to uh, people working in it. Whether in DAOs, if you receive a token, the token goes up, as Punker just said, and this generally uh, helps us all benefit from the, um, from the work that everyone is contributing. So it's a win-win for everyone. Now, why DAOs serve as a space for self-growth? DAOs offer unique opportunities for individuals to develop new or existing skills. Some of the things that fuel this are a important culture of collaboration, diversity among its members, so you can contribute with people that are from, I don't know, the UK, Argentina, Chile, where I'm from, uh, Africa, New Zealand, is just amazing from everywhere in the world. Um, building in public helps people learn, and it's also very transparent. Um, also, peer-to-peer -peer learning, mentorship that is also very helpful. And we try to have um, what we call horizontal conversations, which is having like active listening so that people can learn from each other and level up. Another important aspect is uh, understanding different perspectives, because since it's, it's such an open space, people will have very different perspectives. And it's important to also agree to disagree. And that really helps out some growth and tolerance. So on the way, members develop different um, skill sets. More on the human side, uh, also from the technical aspect. But for me, the most important one is confidence, which is uh, the fact that people, I mean, we're trying to tell them to you know, enjoy decentralization and blockchain and have ownership of your assets. But for that, you have to build confidence. Like, it's not so easy to get to that point. And with confidence, you can actually start to you know, think about, yeah, I should have ownership of my digital data, assets, tokens, etc. So that can build through the process of DAO collaboration. And tolerance is because you know, people understanding different perspectives um, so if someone has a different point of view, I can accept it, maybe I won't agree with it, but I can have an open discussion about the topic. Other uh, skill sets that are developed are effective discussion skills, networking, uh, leadership and conflict resolution, adaptability, and most important of all, empathy for one another, which is what we mostly need. So here's an example of a contributor journey at Bethesda Dow, because I can speak from what I have, from what I have learned in this space, which is um, Bethesda does not have a high barrier to entry; it's very low. Um, you can there is a membership with a token, but people can still access the DAO without paying for that. They get a guest pass, and they have two weeks to start contributing in the space. Then the user joins the DAO. They select the area to explore according to their skill set. So if you're a writer, you can go write. If you're a marketer, you can do marketing. If you're a project manager, you can do that as well. There's many different areas where you can integrate. Then the contributor starts learning levels up, connects with other people in the DAO, starts leveraging opportunities, and so on. This skill set can be developed at the same time while learning Web3, how to interact with the block team, and how to move forward out in the lake, more technical things. Like uh, or financial aspects, borrowing your money, and like by earning tokens, people can start to play around with the blockchain to learn about it. Then I would say people become a builder, and the builder can actually take many roads. It could build a web portfolio and then move on from the DAO, 
and uh, get an official job in a luxury um, entity. It can continue um, contributing to the DAO. Maybe that person already has financial stability and is not really looking to um, you know, create something of their own. They just want to you know, give back, which is great. So um, another role the person can take is create their own project, which is, um, yeah, once the person builds a lot of confidence, they can try something of their own. And another option is becoming part of an existing project, which is um, my case. So, in, yeah, summary, we're all builders. doesn't matter if you come from the legal part, artistic, or writing. It's not just for, I mean, I thought before building was just like, you know, construction and in the technical aspect um, related to coding. But I see that we're all builders. It doesn't matter what area or field you, you're part of. So yeah, speaking about building, uh, this is an invitation to learn more about what I'm currently building with some friends um, at this academy. It's a web free education platform. It's free access for people to learn how to you know, go bankless and just be you know, like owner of your assets. And uh, yeah, this project is totally DAO native. We met in the DAO by contributing and the project is a public good and it's uh, completely funded by grants, donations, and yeah, community support. So final thoughts and a call to action. DAOs are not just about technology. They are about community, personal growth, collaboration, and empowerment. It's time to explore DAOs and be part of this new way of human coordination. If you're writing a DAO, great. And if not, this is a really good way to invite people to join. Uh, according to to develop themselves through self growth. So yeah, become a builder and build the change that you want to see in the world. Thank you.